Well, hello everybody on this frigid Friday, the 12th of February, spring right around the corner, but I'm not buying into it yet because it is damn cold. I'm not complaining though because I got my friends up in Canada who are looking at negative 40 and negative 50 and I think we're at like 3 degrees, but it's supposed to be like negative 15 overnight tomorrow, which is exceptionally cold and allows me to give myself an excuse to work exclusively inside at, at the computer and take care of things where it's much warmer than in my shop. So what I'm going to do today is kind of work with you guys on a base uh, that I had designed and is actually ready for paint at this point in time. And um, it will be um, probably warm enough to base it out. Gosh, I don't know if it's going to hit today, but... Uh, as soon as I turn the fan on in my booth, it pulls all the heat out of the shop. Uh, it's pretty defeating at times. But uh, I'll probably be filming the airbrush work on this one uh, in the near future. But what I wanted to share with you guys was um, this particular paint job, uh, what it is and how I went about it. Now, when I, when I actually did the conceptual work for this uh, base, I actually did it uh, in scale. So... Uh, it's one to one inch, one inch to one inch on the scale as far as the reference of drawing. So, um, actually will be utiliz utilizing the mask that I cut right from this right onto here. So the first thing I did on this was, you know, evaluate what I'm going to be doing, obviously freehand, what's going to be laid out with masking and so forth and, and all that stuff. And if I go up here to, um, wireframe, you can see that I basically had gone in and redrawn the vector elements uh, for this. Fortunately, I had a font that was pretty close to the one that was on the image. I did have to use uh, the um, freehand tool uh, to work this part of the image here, this stylized buffalo. And you can see as I am in wire from, uh, wireframe mode that none of this image of the buffalo actually shows up. So I'll go back out. Go to normal or enhanced. You can go to enhanced in Corel Draw. Um, and for this one, I'm just because I'm just going to be doing all this freehand. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this mask. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to pull it over here. And this is actually a vector path that this rasterized image is trapped inside of. So what I'm going to do is extract that. Let's see, where is that? Tools. I can't remember where it is on this. Oh, it's Vex, yeah. Power Clip. So I'm going to get rid of Power Clip. I'm going to extract, extract the content so it's going to be the actual photograph that we're working from. You can see what's left behind is the actual spline of the vector. And I actually used this particular path to cut the perimeter shape of this body on this whiskey so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this and first I'm going to edit this I'm going to take this out into Photoshop or, or photo paint and Corel draw and then I'm going to turn this into a grayscale and finally a um, black and white image so I'm going to go adjust or no, image convert to grayscale and there it gives me like grayscale went right into the grayscale mode you can see this is really rough really pixelated so I'm not expecting to get much out of it but let's see what happens when I go to black and white and I can work with the curvature on this a little bit as far as the threshold see how many drop down it gets rid of a lot of pixelation so if I just go up enough to get what I want I think I'll go right about there so what it's done is converted this to a really bad rasterized image and it was based off of line art which because it was so poorly pixelated before um, this is exactly what happens with that but um, 
what I'm going to do now is save that and then I'm going to go back out and I'm going to go trace bitmap and this one I'm just going to go line art so I can do some curve adjustments on that as well pick some uh, black and white one I'm going to go one color and smoothing you can see how it wants to smooth it all out and it's really terrible I'm probably just going to end up drawing this freehand in there but um, it's actually really bad. And you can see how poorly detailed this would be as a mask and how virtually useless this will be for me. But um, I'm going to mess around with the smoothing details a little bit, see if I can't tweak it a little bit. But I have a suspicion that's about as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on that and it's going to bring it back out into Corel Draw for me. I'm going to ungroup it and then I'm going to move this over here. Now what I did was I duplicated all the elements on here so I didn't mess up anything in particular and was able to retrieve anything. Should I make a mistake I can obviously hit Control Z as well but I find it obvious it's a little easier just to duplicate the elements you're working on so you have the, the original ones off to the side. Let's go view wireframe here and we'll see what a useless translation that was to go from a vector. Whoops. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, so what it's done is really just made a big mess for me. I will take this, look at this, zoom in, see, there's really nothing there. <laughs> that even resembles a buffalo. Um, I can't find, well maybe it's because the guy gave me a different name to put on this. Oh that's right, it's a kid's name. Let's, let's, let's look for buffalo trace. Let's see if I can find a better image on the net. Obviously you don't need to put this out while I'm searching. See if I find a nice big image. That's a pretty decent sized one. Now let's try it with a better image here. PNG file. So I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to import a PNG file specifically. So I have to look through all these files here. It's not much bigger, unfortunately. Well, I was trying to do it 34 inches too, so let's see if we can do this then. Let's take this one. I'm going to edit this bitmap, and I'm going to go out <clears throat> turn it into a grayscale. Image, convert to grayscale. Yeah, that's a much better, much better. So from here, I can do a couple things. I can adjust brightness, contrast, and try to get a little bit more darks in there. Uh, 
Yeah, let's see if that gives me any any better resolution. Now let's go back out and let's see if we change this to black and white. I'm gonna go line art. Alrighty, and then I hit save, and that will go back to Corel. That will give me all the adjustments I just made. And then I'll go hit uh, trace bitmap with line art. And we'll zoom in on this, see what it's looking like. That's better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and just hit enter. Now I'll have this as a, a loose reference uh, positioning for the... Uh, masking on the buffalo here and the rest of it will be done with vector as we've redrawn it inside the program and that will be the uh, computer section of this particular project and we'll get on the paintwork here real soon have a good one all right so here we are on this uh, custom base project here that i'm working on for a customer it's a uh, revolves around uh, the image of a particular brand of uh, bourbon whiskey and that is called Buffalo Trace. So what I've done was the first thing I did was I sprayed it white, kind of like an off-white for a particular section of the label here. And then uh, I put the mask over that protecting that. But this orange is actually the, the underlaying color that's going to be used for uh, the liquid in the bottle and the refractions and the reflections and and all that stuff um, I do have a pickup that I will be dealing with as far as uh, Masking and making sure that the vinyl does layer with that, but we're gonna do that in the end I am doing this all with opaque colors so I do not have to deal with any um, absorbency of color from aniline dye like if I was to use candy uh, on top of this and then I wanted to put a lighter color on top of that candy would translate or absorb into that particular uh, layer of graphic that would be lighter or any color actually it's going to absorb so uh, what I'm focusing on right now actually we've already gone through the vector part of this program which was really pretty short really not that involved uh, just involved doing some lettering basically the rest of it would be freehand so I'm going to start with this image here that I have and I'm going to work it so that this image is going to translate all the way around the bottle. I have to do a, a mask here uh, just with uh, tape. I'm going to tape off this after I get this done up here, but we'll get going. The first color I'm using here is kind of a, uh, a reddish brown. What I'll do is I'll kind of... Spray that up on there, and I'm going to be working that from this direction over here. It looks like the light's kind of like coming in right in this area here, so that's what we'll be doing first. And I'm going to have to put my respirator on. Here we go. We've been battling this morning trying to figure out what's the best location to film this at. The sun's coming in at a different spot this time of year, so uh, having some technical difficulties per se. But um, So we've relocated, situated, so hopefully the uh, ambient light isn't such has such an impact on what we're trying to do. So now I'm taking a piece of tape here from uh, some FBS UTG Gold, which is rather transparent, very thin, and I'm protecting the lower part of the label so I can develop the liquor uh, in this particular area, the liquid, the fluid in the bottle. I'm disappointed that we don't have an actual bottle of this liquor. I know, I went to this grocery or the uh, liquor store yesterday and they didn't have this particular brand of liquor. They said it's quite popular and I never heard of it. I'm not, I'm not a big liquor guy myself, but I thought it was kind of surprising they didn't have it. And they said when they do get it, it goes pretty fast. So, 
So for now, I'm going to take this. I need my little paper machine. Use my mask it just to protect this. So now I am <coughs> focusing on the bottom portions here and some of the development of the fluid and the shading that's going to go along with the refraction. And what I'll be doing is coming back in with some yellow as well as, turn the fan on please, <coughs> some yellow and some uh, reds. Now I've got some yellow loaded up in my brush. I'm going to start focusing on a transitional light from here to the left or to the right. Pretty simple. Just a light fade. Just a light fade through there. Look at that top now. Alright, so I've taken some of this orange that I was previously working with, more of a kind of muddy brown. I've taken the base color orange that I used, I've added a little bit of red to it, a little bit of black. That was for this initial darkening here. What I've done now is I've taken a little bit more black and a little bit more red and added this color and actually made it um, even darker. You can see the difference in value there so but it's still not black it would look a little unnatural to use straight black what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do some of the shaping uh, that appears on the label as it kind of like goes around the sides and that's basically going to be done with this first color that i messed with and that'll be it. Just a nice graduation of that value from the sides. I'm going to go ahead and set my vector file. Get the dimensions. I'm going to put the pickup in. Alright, so I have this white kind of like an off-white color. I'm going to go in here and spray in this lettering. And then we're going to mask off the bigger lettering and do the drop shadow. Okay, I got all the masking, the counter masking, I got the drop shadow pulled. Now I'm going to go in with a very light coat of the white just to put an undercoat on this so when I go over it with the yellow, it won't be, uh, it won't take too much of the yellow. This one is a light, light pass, little foundation.
And then I can take my yellow. For about five minutes, we can peel it. image and I'm going to pencil in the uh, buffalo. I'm working with a really dark brown mix and this is a uh, this looks like to have been originally rendered in charcoal or a pencil, so I'm gonna kind of give it that feel to it as I'm rendering it. Could be a lot of just kind of like flood strokes on here, little short daggers. So you can see it's a very, very scribbly kind of a loose illustrator application.
doing a lot of pulsing in this one. Finalism effect on this. That's what the background looks like on the. In That's the what image. it is, yeah. really a mixture of textures for this particular style. Got some pointillism. A lot of little dagger strokes. Mixed in with some pointillism and then some scribbly lines. There it is. The ding. No highlights. <laughs>